if you've got a rusty fuel tank like this one i'm going to show you how you get all the rust out of that and make it like a brand new tank using a battery charger an aerosol cap and any old piece of steel so we've been away for a while and a couple of you have missed us so i really appreciate people getting in touch reaching out and asking if we're all right if we're still doing stuff yeah we are still doing stuff we've moved premises uh, we're not in the old workshop anymore and i don't actually have a workshop so what i've done is i've no expense spared i've spent a full 200 quid and got a workshop tent so for now it's gonna have to do until enough people start watching videos that I can afford a real workshop and we've got loads of content lined up for you we're gonna do some more work on the katana we're gonna get that more ship shape we've got shane from australia who sent us a massive care package full of parts that you can't get over here I'm going to put a video together just for those parts that you sent me. I've not forgot about you, mate. Really do appreciate you sending me that stuff over. Also, I want people to let us know what you think about us rebranding as a different name altogether. Specialised Motorcycle Transport, when I first started the channel, was just about my business. And it more about its own thing now. So I'm open to any suggestions. If anybody's got any suggestions as to what to call a channel if I was to rebrand it. I'm not sure yet. I may just carry on as the same brand. 96% of people who watch my videos aren't subscribed. Like, I don't understand why. So, for the time being, I've just got a little job on for a friend of mine, Chris, who's started his own bike business. He's buying and selling bikes, and he's come across a, an R1 that's got a really grotty tank. We've got the tank, we've got all the things together that we need to do the electrolysis. So, let's just crack on with it. The tank with the rust is connected to the negative terminal, which then becomes the cathode piece of iron or steel is connected to the positive terminal which is the anode the tank is then filled with a solution made of water and sodium carbonate which acts as an electrolyte this reverses the chemical reaction caused by the rust and converts the iron oxide back to iron removing the rust from the tank walls so here she is here's the tank now i've been told that this is rotten as a fair inside and it will be really impressed if i can clean it up uh, we've done this job before and i know what kind of job it turns out let's see how bad it is can't really see inside but oh good lord yeah that's bad dear lord yeah that is bad oh there's actual flakes you can see all the way into the bottom oh my good lord so yeah that's really bad that is so bad the fuel inside it you can hear the sand or grit that's in the bottom of it it sounds like um maraca right that's yeah the lid off a tank so we can see better. Mm. I think a lot of that is paint, you know. It is rotten, but I think a hell of a lot of that is paint. Well, that's a much better. Yeah, I think it would help just to flush that out and that and get rid of a hell of a lot of that contaminant. These orange parts, it's the same colour as the tank. You get that a little clean out. There is some fuel in this, so I'm gonna go and get rid of that. Let's get the stock cock level sensor out. Good Lord. Ugh. Look at the state of that. Yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a little plate, drill some holes, bolt that in place with a bit of silicon sealant just so the water doesn't come out and just block everything up. Make sure it's not going to leak the water out. As soon as it's airtight, fill it up with water and we'll move on to the next step of process. I'm just going to use a step drill just because I feel sorry for it. It never knew it's real dad. Used a couple of bits of old fuel pipe and some M6 bolts just to seal up those fuel feeds. What we're gonna have to do is prop it up somehow so it's level like that. So the water gets to all the different parts of the tank and there's nowhere left. Just need to get it into a position where it's not gonna fall off once we've got a bit of weight in it with the water. Because the water is gonna be, it's probably gonna be 20 litres of water, which will equate to about 20 kilos inside the tank which is all already five kilos so we don't want that falling off a bench what we're going to do is we're going to fill it with water and put these in these soda crystals these soda crystals they're one kilograms worth and i think i paid 80p for them but i must have done six tanks with these yeah good value for money i'm going to fill this with water and then empty it out just to get rid of that nasty bit of fuel Uh, it's just normal tap water. I'm not using distilled water at this stage, but what I'm gonna do later, and I'll show you why. And just to make sure it's not leaking, which doesn't look like it is, which is nice. So far, so good. 
thought I'd show you what had happened to the gauze on the actual fuel tap. Look at that. I'm gonna see if Chris can get another one of these. You can buy these separate, I think. Just one heat teaspoon for. Should about do it for now. Closer you can get the water to the top, the better. Let's take more rust out that way. But there will be pockets of air hiding around the top of the tank somewhere. So what I'm doing now is I'm just moving it around a little bit. So the water goes into those holes. I've done that a fair few times now. So now what I'll do is just top it up. Ball's coming out now, so that's just about got it. Let's try and get it right at the very top. I need to drill a little hole in the top of the aerosol cap. Just big enough for the bolt to drop through. Right, next. Let's get a battery charger. The important thing to note here is that you can't use a modern smart charger on this. For this job in particular, because modern smart chargers detect the battery, and if it's not giving out 12 volts or something close to it, seven or eight volts, it'll just not charge at all, so you'll not get anything. And then in three days, when you come back to it and realize it's not working, you'll be blaming me. So you jump in comments. All right, so I'm all set up now. We've got a crocodile clip on the bolt that's going through and it's hanging in such a way that it's not going to touch the metal. That's really important. That bolt cannot touch the metal of the tank at all, otherwise you're going to get a dead short and then the electrolysis won't work. As long as that bolt is dropping into the water. Yeah? You drop it in there, and then I've had to take a little bit of the paint off to get an earth on the, on the tank there. So, now, this battery charger is really old, so it's not a smart charger. It's giving out 12 volts. And it says they're two amps, but I'm not going to trust that at all. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get my tester and test the uh, voltage that's going to it. Multimeter or multimeter, depending on what side of the pond you are, in voltage. Hmm, saying 11 volts DC there, now that'll do. But yeah, 11 volts is travelling through that water in the tank. And that's all you need to do. Nothing is going to happen in the first 10 minutes or in the first hour. So don't bother keep looking at it. Set it going like this, leave it. And then I'll come back to it tomorrow. And hopefully it's a bit warmer. So it's been about 16 hours. So I'll uh, give it a little look see. Just because I'm impatient. Look at that. Is the rust removing from inside a tank. Looks like someone sneezed in there to me. I expect to see more than that, if I'm really honest. We are bad this tank is. Put it back on. It's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. So I'm just going to leave it be. Uh, give it another 24 hours and go back and have a home. Tomorrow. Storm Eowyn. Storm Eowyn. Storm Eowyn. Potential life-threatening winds to Ireland and the UK. Right, this is not good. So I've got home from work and we've got a particularly bad storm today. So the wind is atrocious. So I got home and the, the workshop stroke 10 was trying to take off. So I strapped it down to my Jenny, but that just made it angry. It got a little bit worse. So I've parked all the vehicles really close to it, just so that it's defended from the wind. But we've had a crisis inside. I'm so close, I can't even get through. Look what happened. Look, my toolbox has gone over. The bench has gone over and the tank is that a spill? So there's still water in it, so that can't have been too bad, but we've got a little chip there. I can't see any more damage on it, but I'm really sorry, Chris. Doesn't look that bad. Right. I think we kinda got away with it. I'm not gonna mess with it. I'm gonna see what Chris wants to do with it. Oh, it's dinted there as well. Oh, God. As you can see, it's not too steady when it's windy, and it's really windy outside. It's died down a little bit at the moment, but it was trying to take off earlier on. You like seen that a wizard of Oz. So it's strapped down and I'm gonna leave everything now until wind's died down and I'll come back tidy all this up. And then hopefully I don't have to click my heels three times to get home. Fast forward to a couple of days later. Been in touch with Chris, told him the situation, told him what's happening. And uh, he said, that's no problem, because I'm having it painted anyway. So it's a bit of a consolation. 
obviously I don't like to go around damaging things, and especially things that aren't mine. I can cope with it if it's mine. But. So yeah, we've got a bit of damage outside at the tank there, and we've got some a uh, little crack where the filler's been been cracked on. So it's been on for three days now with the battery charger on. So to bring you in close. This is genuinely the first time I've taken this off in three days. Oh, look at that. Yes. It's like a turd. That's awesome. Obviously the aerosol cap cracked when the tank fell off the bench. But look at the build up on that. That just shows you. And that is the rust that was from the inside of the tank that's now attracted to this bolt. And I think some of the bolts disappeared as well off end. So now it's time to clean the water. I've got to change the water and uh, get it back on for another couple of days. I need a mop bucket and filter out the water or as much as I can. So there is the amount of crap that's come out of the tank. And that's not just sediment, that's all the rust and the big particles that's uh, that's actually come out of the uh, off of the surface of the tank. Give you a little peek inside. If you can see inside there or not. There we go. It's a little bit better. We changed the water, put in some more soda crystals, and we set it going again. All right, got some fresh clean water in it. I'm gonna leave it again for a couple of days. All right, so day after the night before, Nice. So once again, we dumped the old water out, filled it up with new clean water, and put some soda crystals in. God, oh, that is so much better than it was. Just came back from trials riding. We got the pressure wash out. So this is getting cleaner now every time I check it. The water's actually clean now. So what I'm going to do is drain this out and pressure wash it inside. See what we can get out of it. It will flash rust a little bit. And then we're going to fill it back up with deionized water. So over the next few days, we just kept repeating that process over and over again. Trying to just get out as much of that rust as we possibly can. We took the plate off the bottom of the tank because we just couldn't get enough silt out through the lid. We had an issue. It's leaked overnight and leaked rusty water everywhere. So I just quickly dumped all the water out and uh, it's leaking from here. So we'll just change this. I'll put some something a bit more substantial on it. All right, so replace that with some more reinforced stuff. We've only got a couple more runs left. One last drain out, one last fill. Once we've drained that out, we're gonna prevent the flash rusting and that's where the deionized water comes in. We swapped the bolt because being the anode, it had just been eaten away. Ah. All that's left in there now is dirty water and you can just see little spots of flash rusting. So let's give it a right good rinse out and the mark in the middle is uh, where the fuel nozzle has been going in over the years. Just rubbed away, just flattened it out. Deionized water, that's what's going in next. It's not expensive, 15 quid for 25 litres. This is the last dredge of the tank 
Oh man! Where's all that coming from? Look at that! And that's supposed to be the last one. I wonder what's happened there. How weird is that? The distilled water's brought out more than the normal water. So it would be an expensive way to do it, but if you use distilled water, you'd get a lot more out a lot more quickly. So next, I've got to get that water out of there without it flash rusting. Now, distilled water is a lot better for the flash rusting just because there's less minerals and silly things in it that might cause that flash rust and accelerate that flash rust. Uh, but if you just pour a little bit out and put in some oil, and as the water level drops, which slosh the oil around, it should coat the inside, prevent that flash rusting. That's the block of wood that I've dropped on my foot about six times since I've been doing this project. But I'll never learn. All right, so as quickly as I can, I've got some old fork oil, probably never gonna use this now. Dump that in there, and that will float on top of water. So just give that a nice slosh around there. Not poured all the water out. So that's how much water i poured out of it. You see that? And now the, the oil's on top of it. So when you slosh it around, it'll coat all the top part of the inside of the tank. To wash it around. I take it outside, take the plate off the bottom, and drain the water out that way. Now what I'm gonna do is spray in a little bit of WD-40. Because of all the jobs that people use WD-40 for, this is actually the job. We want to displace the water, and that's what WD stands for, water displacement. And it was the 40th time they tried to do it. I should just get all the water droplets off the side that are hanging on, if there are any. Any bits that the oil hasn't got. Oh, that's much cleaner than it was. And look how much better that is than when it when I got it. All right, now I'm gonna get my compressor, blow that out, make all the water's out of it. I'll get Chris a ring and see if he wants to collect it. So this is just a little bit of fuel with two stroke oil in it. And what this is for, I'm not putting a lot in, I'm just putting enough just to coat the inside of the tank. Well, it can get rid of the remains of that oil. And that's it. All you need to do now is flush it out with some fresh fuel fit it to the bike, away you go. So we've taken the tank from this to this. Well, that's it, that's how to do the electrolysis on your fuel tank. It's taken about two weeks to be honest, probably could have done it quicker. But got work commitments, things like that. You don't have to use the distilled water, that was just a choice. I want to get a better result, so that's why I use that. The idea about this channel is to do things as cheaply as possible. So if you're on a budget, it's not end of world if you find a tank that's rusty inside, so it's furry like this one. A few quid, no special tools, and you get a decent result like that one. It's not perfect, but I don't think anybody's looking for perfect. If you enjoyed that, and you want to see more projects like this, it will rescue things that are beyond rescuing. Make sure you leave a like and a comment. Don't forget to subscribe. In the next video, we'll be getting going Richard's beautiful Z650 after a little spill. So make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell.